Okay, this is lecture 14 of basic calculus 1. Uh, recall that we had uh, discussed about the differentiability and the derivative of a function in our last lecture. So, today we will be talking something about derivatives and tangents. Physically, you see that the derivative is the speed, instantaneous speed, but mathematically it has something to do with the tangent. So, first we will discuss what do we mean by a tangent to a curve. Let us say the curve which is in blue here, that is our curve and we consider a point say x 0 on the x axis corresponding to we have a point on the curve which we write as p coordinates as x 0 and f of x 0. At that point we feel that this pink line straight line is the tangent to the curve. So, intuitively it means it is a straight line, it is a unique straight line which touches the curve at that point. That is what we intuitively feel that a tangent should be. So, but there are some critical cases. So, taking that into account, we may think of a tangent to a curve as a cryptical description. It is a unique straight line that has exactly one point in common with the curve at identically two points. So, that is the cryptical matter here. What do I mean by identically two points? So, it would mean something like if you take the tangent, it is a unique straight line and what sort of straight line is it? If you change its slope a little bit, then it has more than one point in common with the curve. That is what it is mean at it is a curve at touches the curve at identically two points. If you change a little bit in its slope the direction, then there will be at least two points common to the curve. It will become a second. So, that is what we feel a tangent is, but this is about the curve in the plane. We are only talking of curves which are functions and specifically y equal to f of x. For that we want to see what will be the tangent at a point. So, as you see for us the definition will be something like you take two points on the curve say p and q. Let us say the distance corresponding to that in the x axis is h. So, one is at x 0 another is at x 0 plus h. Now, we have two points p and q p coordinates as x 0 and f of x 0 q has coordinates x 0 plus h and f of x 0 plus h. h could be negative the other side. So, q could have been here on the left of p. So, we allow that we write x 0 plus h it does not mean h is positive or less. So, now we have the second the straight line joining these two points p and q. So, our feeling is that when h goes to 0 this second becomes a tangent. So, that will be our use of the notion of tangent here for a curve. Okay, suppose y equal to f of x is the curve and we take two points p and q, then you join these two points to get the second and what is the slope of the second? It is y 2 minus y 1 by x 2 minus x 1 which is for q and p f of x 0 plus h minus f of x 0 divided by x 0 plus h minus x 0 which simplifies the denominator simplifies to h. So, we get this ratio increment in f divided by increment in uh, x. So, our m is when h goes to 0 this will be the slope of the tangent y equal to f x at the point x equal to x 0. So, this is exactly the definition of derivative when limit goes to 0 the right hand side that is the derivative at x 0. Therefore, we would say that f prime x 0 is the slope of the tangent to the curve y equal to f of x at x equal to x 0. So, this is when everything goes well there can be some cases where this fails like when the limit does not exist for example. 
or it blows up becomes infinity that is also one of the cases of the non existence. So, when it blows up what happens slope becomes infinity means the straight line which we get from this whose slope is it that is having angle with x axis as phi by 2. So, that means a vertical tangent. So, that is the case which is not here in the differentiability. So, for a vertical tangent this will fail and its slope is not defined. If you take the slope in this way the definition then it will not be defined. So, you have to take that into consideration while considering tangents. So, differentiation means it has some more constraints than just having an existence of a tangent. So, in general we will stick to this view of a tangent and here we are taking a curve not necessarily y equal to f x as the curve. So, there you might be able to express y as a function of x or x is a function of y. For example, your semicircle the vertical one right the right side if you take this one this is x equal to f of y is the function not y equal to f x. y equal to f x is not a function because a vertical line can cross it in two points. Okay, so, we are considering both d y by d x and d x by d y. If they do not exist at a point, then a tangent to the curve is not defined at that point. So, that is obvious from this and if both of them are 0 at a point, then also a tangent to the curve is not defined at that point as we have seen for the vertical tangent y equal to f of x. If at least one of these two d x by d y or d x d y by d x they exist and it is a non zero real number at a point then a tangent to the curve exists at that point. So, since we are considering y equal to f x our d x by d y goes away we just concentrate on this that d y by d x is a non zero real number that would give rise to a tangent. Of course, it will exclude the vertical tangent case. So, let us see some examples how these critical cases are coming up and they are covered. Suppose you take y equal to mod x that is our function. So, at x equal to 0, so you know it is a graph it looks something like this y equal to mod x at the point 0 we cannot find one unique straight line which will touch the curve. Of course, one is x axis but we could have taken another something like this and there are so many infinitely many straight lines we can draw which are touching the curve at x equal to 0. So, since uniqueness breaks down we would say that it does not have a tangent, tangent should be unique straight line. So, there are more than one straight lines that touches the curve at x equal to 0 and so we say that it does not have a tangent at x equal to 0. Let us consider the second example. Here we have the curve as y equal to f of x which is x to the power 1 by 3. So, look at the point uh, say x equal to 0 that is the origin. This is a point on the curve. So, at that point our definition would say that y axis is a tangent to the curve because if you change the slope slightly it will intersect the curve in at least two points and it only touches the curve at 0 not at other points though in the picture you cannot see it because they are too close. So, that is how it goes there is we would say that it has a vertical tangent that is the y axis is a tangent to the curve, but here you see the tangent itself intersects the curve. If you look at some upper side it is touching down side also it is touching and if you vary the slope a little bit it will cross in two points. So, it satisfies our uh, notion of the tangent that it has only one co point common with this and it is a unique straight line that happens other straight lines will not have that property they will cross the curve at two points or even may not cross or may not have a common point with the curve. So, this is a tangent ok. So, this is one type of thing, but here there is something else happens. If you take the derivative of this function it does not exist at 0 
why the derivative will be f of 0 plus h which is h to the power 1 by 3 minus f of 0 which is 0 divided by h. So, that gives s to the power minus 2 by 3 whose limit does not exist. In fact, it, it is equal to infinity, it blows up when h is 0 plus let us say 0 minus also it is square. So, that would give infinity again. So, once it is infinity, the slope is infinity, it says that there is a vertical tangent, but it does not give us the tangent because it is not differentiable. Okay? Intuitively, it says that there is a vertical tangent because it is limit is infinity. So, we will have another example. Let us say y equal to x to the power 2 by 3. So, that looks like this. There is a cusp here. It comes down to this and then goes up. It is not like the second one, not like the y equal to mod x, but there is a cusp type of thing. So, what happens here? When you take the derivative, try to compute its derivative at 0, it is s to the power 2 by 3, this is f of 0 plus h minus f of 0 divided by h, that is h to the power minus 1 by 3. When h is positive, it would give the limit as infinity. When the left side limit you take h goes to 0 from the negative side, you would get minus infinity. So, again the other side will become minus infinity and the infinity. So, you would not get a differentiable curve is not differentiable at x equal to 0. right? But then what about the tangent? Again you may say vertical tangent exists, but it is not differentiable at x equal to 0. There is a cusp. Okay. But how do you say vertical tangent exists or not? In order to have the vertical tangent exists, we should have the slope as infinity or minus infinity one of them, but it does not have a limit. So, we cannot say that this y axis becomes a tangent to the curve. right? So, you would say that the curve does not even have a vertical tangent. Fine. So, these are typical examples where there will be difference between the derivative and the tangent, the slope of the tangent which should be the derivative. So, there is a difference. Okay. <coughs> now, we will have another thing for the differentiability. This will also figure out in this uh, discussion about tangents. So, what it says if y equal to f of x is differentiable at x equal to c, then the same function y equal to f of x is continuous at that point. That is what you say this way. If a function is differentiable at a point, then it is continuous. Of course, we can prove it very easily. So, let us say it is differentiable at a point. It is not an end point, but it is an interior point of the domain of f x. Let us take this case. So, in this case, we will have the limit of the increment in y divided by increment in x as that increment of x goes to 0 exists. That is your f prime c here. Suppose that exists. Now, it is differentiable at x equal to c. So, that means this limit exists and which we write as f prime of c, f of c plus h minus f c divided by h as limit h goes to 0 exists. Now, what do we do? we express because we want continuity. So, let us express f of c plus h minus f of c that is equal to forget about the limit now, it is just the expression f of c plus h minus f of c is f of c plus h minus f c divided by h times h. Now, when you take the limit on the left side and also limit on the right one of the equality sign, you see that limit of first expression exists limit of the second expression also exists. So, limit of the product will be product of the limits. The first one gives a prime c, second one gives uh, 0, that is why it is equal to 0. Right? So, what we get is limit of h goes to 0, f of c plus h minus f of c is equal to 0. And that is the definition of, that satisfies the definition of continuity. Therefore, at c, f is continuous. So, if it is left or right side only, 
then also similar things only one sided limits will come here and you would get the same result ok. So, all that we see the differentiability at a point implies continuity at a point. Now, if you take stock we have this one going along with the tangent. So, when you say something is not differentiable it can happen from the tangent side if you see geometrically and also this condition that not continuous also helps. So, these are the cases when a function is not differentiable at x equal to c. What happens? There will be a corner at the curve at that point c f c if you look at the curve it happens like in your mod x y equal to mod x there is a corner on the curve at that point say on the mod x x at 0 there is a corner or there can be cusp like your earlier x to the power uh, 2 by 3. So, there what you get something like a cusp which is this case there can be corner first case or this can be second case there can be a cusp as we have seen there or there can be a vertical tangent to the curve like x to the power 1 by 3 as we have seen here in the third one or this condition that the function is not continuous at x equal to c. So, when it is not continuous it can have some two types of things there is a jump that the limit does not exist right limit of the function x goes to c does not exist. Here left side limit is different from the right side limit or it can happen that the limit exists <coughs> left side limit right side limit equal to uh, something some real number, but that is not the functional value. So, it is illustrated in this case. These are the five possibilities that can happen when a function is not differentiable at a point looking at the geometries. Okay. <clears throat> but what happens there is something more that will be coming it is not differentially no it can have jump discontinuity it can have corners it can have cusps and so on. So, what our result does not say is that if the function is uh, differentiable at a point right then that derivative is continuous our theorem does not say this the derivative can be f prime of x this function f prime x the new function need not be continuous at that point all that the theorem says that f of x is continuous at that point when f prime c exists only that much it says ok. So, this is this is something else that the new function is continuous or not. So, we can have examples for that. So, let us see the function f of x equal to x square into sin 1 by x if x is not equal to 0 and 0 if x equal to 0. So, it is not differentiable at x equal to 0 or is it differentiable at x equal to 0 ok. So, the thing is we have seen this earlier we have found that at 0 because this is sin 1 by x plus h and so on if you take x square. So, that dominates and that gives rise to 1 x cancels this gives rise to 0 and the functional value is 0. So, you will show that it is differentiable, but then what about the derivative the new function when x is not equal to 0 you will discover shortly we have not done this yet how to differentiate this product it is a product of two functions we know only for x square we know only for sin. So, using that we will find out soon that it is or maybe in the next lecture that the derivative will be this one 2 x sin 1 by x minus cosine of 1 by x if it is not 0 that is how the derivative will look like. Now, but you say uh, you see that this new function which is f prime x which I write it as g x this limit at x goes to 0 does not exist. Why is it so? Of course, this is 2 x sin 1 by x as x goes to 0 sin 1 by x will be bounded by 1 and minus 1 x goes to 0. So, this will give 0, but this factor cos of 1 by x as x goes to 0 
will not exist right there can be this 1 by x can take different types of values going up to infinity right 1 by x limit goes to infinity so near infinity that is in a neighborhood of infinity you can find points so that cosine will become 0 you can find also points where cosine becomes 1 by taking suitable multiples of uh, pi or pi by 2 so you will see that limit g x does not exist not even infinity or minus infinity it does not exist and also neither infinity nor minus infinity so you see that the g x or the f prime x that limit does not exist so it is not continuous at x equal to 0 right but f is continuous that is what our theorem says because it is differentiable at 0 f is continuous and that is also clear okay but there is something else which satisfies for this derivative that is for f prime x you remember that if a function is continuous on an interval then it satisfies the conclusion of intermediate value theorem that is if you take an interval a and b closed interval where it is continuous then between f of a and f of b you take any value that is achieved that is there is one x or c such that f of c will be equal to that value which is in between f and f b this is your intermediate value property or conclusion of intermediate value theorem so if it is a derivative like your g x here f prime x that satisfies this property right though it is not continuous but this is satisfied so that is our theorem that it does not have jump discontinuity there will not be a jump in f prime x though that is not continuous right we will not prove that theorem it will again require our completeness property and so on but we will see that let f be differential function whose domain includes an interval that is important here because we want conclusion of ivt to hold if d is between f prime a and f prime b then there exists a point c in a b such that this d is achieved that is d is equal to f prime of c so this is what a nice property of derivatives so sometimes we will be using this that otherwise we say the derivative does not have jump discontinuity that is what it means.